and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Angie and I'm a chemist who loves makeup. So today we are going to be talking about a recent issue that arose from the brand Perito. They are a Korean skincare brand. So this is specifically about their Centella sunscreen. So this sunscreen was advertised to have an SPF of 50 plus, but when some independent tests were conducted, the SPF results that were yielded were closer to 19. So significantly lower than the advertised amount. So we're going to talk about a lot of things in this video. I'm going to try to break it down the best that I can for you. We're going to talk about the independent testing that was conducted, how it was tested, why it was tested, if this has happened before with other sunscreens, how does this kind of problem arise? Is this a common problem? And Perito actually did respond, so we'll break that down too. Everything I talk about is my opinion based on my previous knowledge and some resources that I have found. I will link any resources I found down below so you can go look into those resources yourself if you would like. Like I said, the Perito Centella sunscreen has an SPF of 50 plus. That's what they advertise on their YouTube page. They actually say it has an SPF of around 84 too, and they show test results from this. And this has just been a very wildly popular sunscreen because it's very lightweight, but supposedly has very, very high SPF coverage. Since a lot of people were talking about this, people looked into it farther and were kind of skeptical of the SPF claims because the level of sunscreen ingredients in here is very low, generally speaking. It's about 5%. I've seen some a lot higher, maybe 15% around there. And if you plug it into one of those SPF calculator estimators, based on the concentration of these ingredients, it is estimated that it would have an SPF of around 10-ish. Now, you can't just assume an SPF based on these calculators. There are testing procedures that have to be followed to determine and advertise the SPF on the packaging. So the founder of INCI Decoder, Judith, was skeptical of this as well and actually bought some of the Centella sunscreen, put it in unmarked packaging, and sent it off to a Polish lab to be tested in vitro. For in vitro testing means that it's being tested outside of a living organism. In this case, it is tested using a spectrophotometer and instrumentation to determine its SPF value. This in vitro testing isn't considered adequate or what you are allowed to use as proof of what you are putting on your label claims, but it is faster. You can get results a lot faster. So I think maybe this would be beneficial in a situation where you're starting to formulate a product and you kind of want to estimate where it's going to be at. From this particular test that was done, the results obtained were an average of 15.8 plus or minus 2.3 is the estimation where the SPF in this actually lies. And like I said, this isn't considered the correct way to test for SPF. So from the same Polish lab, they sent more samples to do in vivo testing. So in vivo testing is done on volunteers and they basically put some of the sunscreen on them and they use a light that simulates the spectrum that the sun would put out. I think it has to be from 290 to 400 nanometers, which covers a very large majority of the UV spectrum. And you perform this on 10 subjects, see how their skin reacts to it, measure these results, and that is how we get the SPF that's on packaging. The method that seems to be typically used, it was used by this lab, and it was used supposedly by the lab that tests the Perito product, which is method ISO 24444. This seems to be the standard method that's used across many, many countries supposedly, and it t does take longer, but is considered the more accurate way to test for SPF. So from this Polish lab, it was estimated to be an SPF of around 19 plus or minus 1.4. The INCI decoder founder obviously knew this was one lab's findings and wanted to send it out to another lab to be tested. This lab performed the same procedure, the same method, and their average results were 19.2 plus or minus 2.4. So these are very, very close. And because two different independent labs seem to have gotten to the same conclusion, I do feel very confident that the true SPF is in the 19 range. So as long as there's no foul play involved, I'm gonna assume that the results obtained are accurate. Now, just because this happened in a Korean brand, this does not mean this is a Korean beauty problem. This does not mean this is a Korean FDA problem. In fact, there are a few instances all over the world in which issues occurred where the tested results weren't 
accurate. There is a report in New Zealand where Consumer New Zealand tested 20 sunscreens of various brands and many of them were significantly lower than the label. I think only eight of them actually reached their target label claim. And there was also an instance in the US where there was a lab that is a testing lab and they conducted SPF testing and they were lying about the number of subjects they use, they were falsifying results. It's just not one country's problem. All these countries handle things in different ways. So for example, the US regulates sunscreen like an OTC drug. In the US, drugs are classified as something that's gonna treat, prevent, cure disease. So obviously this is preventing skin cancer. There's only a finite amount of ingredients that you can use that are approved for use by the FDA to use in your sunscreen for sun protection. And in the case of this sunscreen, this Pareto sunscreen, it's not even allowed to be sold in the US advertised as a sunscreen technically because the sunscreen ingredients it uses are ethyl hexyl triazone and diethyl amino hydroxy benzoyl hexyl benzoate. These two are not approved for use in the US. I think the last one that the FDA approved was in 1999. So we are very, very behind in terms of adding new sunscreen ingredients. Other countries allow them. Um, Australia is also very, very strict with how they handle sunscreens. I don't even, I don't think this one is also allowed to be sold. Again, as things fall through the cracks. With the case of um, Europe classifies it as a cosmetic, Korea classifies it as a functional cosmetic, and you do have to submit SPF results to the Korean FDA when you are selling sunscreen. So similar measures just classify different. Perito actually did respond in less than 24 hours. So I'm gonna read to you what Perito said happened and what their side of the story is. This So this was from an Instagram post. So they said, hello, this is Perito. Please accept our sincere apologies for the delay in responding to your request, clarifying the information over the SPF and PA in index of Perito Centella green level unscented sunscreen. Sun, unscented sun, excuse me. For better understanding, we would like to first share the details of the sunscreen development process. When developing a product as an ODM, original design manufacturing system, several parties are involved, such as the manufacturing company, the brand KFDA, that's the Korean FDA, and the testing lab. As a brand, we have requested the manufacturer to develop an exclusive product for Pareto, for which we receive the formulation. The manufacturer of the product has had a long history of developing quality sunscreen products and high technology. Thus, the marketed SPF and PA index was not questioned was not questioned by the brand. Moreover, the SPF 50 PA++++ of the Pareto Centella Green Level Unscented Sun was officially approved by the KFDA before the product was launched on the market. However, recently, we have received a significant amount of inquiries on clarification of the SPF and PA index of the product. That's when we decided to verify once again the manufacturer's registration with the KFDA and the authenticity of the registered documents. We have assured that there was no problem. The pro product has been legally recognized by all aforementioned parties. However, due to the recent debates, we decided to conduct our own research on the efficacy of the sunscreen. In order to obtain precise results, currently Pareto has requested performance of both in vivo and in vitro tests for all three Pareto sunscreen products other than the initial test conducted by the testing lab and the manufacturer. Although the results have not yet been released, we have acknowledged the seriousness of this issue. We have been closely monitoring the test results that were recently published online. As a result, they have paused all sales. I'm going to cut this short. They have paused all sales of all of their sunscreens until they are fact-checked and confirmed by the parties aside from the initial manufacturer and the testing lab and they say that they're gonna share the results. So their claim is that they were lied to by the manufacturer and the testing lab. So I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that they were probably recommended this testing lab by the manufacturer, or the manufacturers in some way associated with the testing lab. And this is very possible. And again, they said they're registered with all parties. This is a very reasonable response for the duration of time that we found out about it. I just found about this yesterday, and Pareto has already come out and made a statement. We kind of have to wait and see. I think that they are very responsible in that they stopped selling the product and are looking into it. And so is this something that happens? Is this something that 
companies have to deal with. So just because a lab's registered or a manufacturer's registered with whatever doesn't 100% guarantee that they're not going to have shady business practices um, like or things like that. And this brand, Perito, was founded in 2017, so I'm, and I'm going to assume it's a smaller brand, although I know that this product has been very successful. If you did not come from a background of looking at this kind of stuff, I don't believe that you would really know what to look for when you're vetting manufacturing facilities, when you're vetting testing labs. And it sounds like potentially this manufacturer recommended this testing lab who's probably working very closely with them. Of uh, They said they were known to have a very good track record, so they put their trust in them. These businesses have to make money, and I'm sure especially with SPF testing, there are a lot of SPF testing facilities out there, and, and either this they were doing things they shouldn't have been doing or maybe they just weren't adequate maybe they just aren't a good lab so and all of these places supposedly use the same testing method yet we've had two out of three last tests get the same result so they kind of put a lot of trust into this manufacturer and into this testing facility and as a brand Perito does have to take responsibility even if it was on the fault of the testing lab and or the manufacturer it's still gonna be Perito's responsibility to take and they are probably going to lose customers over this regardless of how they handle the situation because people aren't going to trust that their SPF is what it says it's at and for them they were founded in 2017 from what I read I'm assuming this is a smaller brand with a smaller team and if none of those people had familiarity with manufacturing if they weren't involved in this kind of aspect of like product development, then they may not know how to vet a laboratory, how to vet a manufacturing facility, what kind of actions they could take to mitigate this. They could, for instance, they could have sent this to multiple different testing labs and see if they get the same result. And they'll probably end up bringing someone onto their team that can help deal with this. That'd probably be someone really valuable to bring to their team. This is something that's really important because these bigger, bigger parent, these bigger giant brands of people to vet where they test, to vet where they manufacture, to vet the ingredients manufacturers. And because they have that manpower, they can vet it a lot better and are less likely to get taken advantage of. So I think that Burrito has handled this the best they can so far. They address this in 24 hours and have sent it out, so we'll just have to wait for the results. I'm gonna assume they're gonna match whatever the the two other the I'm gonna assume that the results are probably gonna be pretty similar to whatever the German and the Polish lab are and we probably won't see sunscreens from them for a while I doubt they're gonna use the same manufacturer I doubt they're gonna use the same laboratory I've seen a lot of people also worried as consumers how they can ensure that their SPF that is on their sunscreens is correct and the truth is there's really not a lot you can do unless you go send it out for independent testing. There is a level of trust that you have to have when you're buying sunscreens. Um, it's the same as a lot of other things when you buy. When I buy, when you buy a car, when you buy, um, when you buy food, when you buy medicine. There are regulations in place, but things still get through the cracks. So you have to have a level of trust. Try to buy from a reputable brand. So if you are someone who purchases sunscreen and you thought it has an SPF of 50 and you're really concerned, if you like this one because it's lightweight and it was either this or you weren't going to wear sunscreen because you don't like the way that some of those higher SPF ones, and this whole incident just kind of shows how there's a lot of growth that companies have to do and these kind of things can happen. and. The best case scenario, we hope that they put out a new sunscreen. I'm sure if they do, they're going to release a lot of results from it. And I hope that you guys learned something today. Please give me your thoughts about this situation down below. I would love to know what you think. And I'm sure that more people are going to come out on YouTube and talk about this. There's been a lot of talk on Instagram. So if there's going to be YouTube videos out, I'll link those down below. I'm going to link some accounts that have been talking about it that are other people in the science community that I love. And if you learned something today, give this video a like. And if you want to see more science videos about makeup and skincare, do not forget to click the subscribe button. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!